How well armed are these terrorists? I know there was an exercise going on at the time they revolted. They're heavily armed, I'm afraid. What about their battle experience? The six members of Foxhound in charge are all hardened veterans. They're tough enough to eat nails and ask for seconds. I wouldn't expect anything less from Foxhound. The others are next generation special forces. They're not your average grunts either. So what exactly are they demanding? A person's remains. Remains? That's right. To be more accurate, cell specimens which contain the individual's genomic information. Cell specimens? Why would they want that? The terrorists need them. You see, these next generation special forces have been strengthened through gene therapy. Strengthened? You've heard of the Human Genome Project. They've been mapping the human genome, and they're nearly finished. Following up on this research, the military has been working towards identifying those genes which are responsible for making effective soldiers. There are genes that do that? Yes. And using gene therapy, they're able to transplant those genes into regular soldiers. Gene therapy? I'll explain this part. With gene therapy, we can remove those genes which we know may lead to sickness or disease, and at the same time, splice in genes with beneficial effects, such as resistance to cancer, for example. In other words, we can overcome all sorts of genetic diseases, and at the same time, add genetic characteristics as desired. Okay. And so if you knew what genes were responsible for making the perfect soldier, you could implant them in the same way, right? Yes, we could. But it all depends on being able to isolate and identify those soldier genes. And in order to do that, it's helpful if you can study the genomic information of one of the greatest soldiers ever. One of the greatest soldiers ever? The man they call the greatest warrior of the 20th century. You don't mean Big Boss. That's right. We've been working feverishly to identify the genes responsible for his incredible combat skill. So far, we've discovered about 60 of the so-called soldier genes. So his body was recovered after all. Yes, and his cells have remained frozen in a cryo chamber. His genomic information is a priceless treasure to mankind. Priceless to the military, perhaps. His body was burned severely, but it was possible to restore his DNA profile from just a single strand of his hair. You people are amazing. And then you're gonna transplant those genes into soldiers? Yes. We'll use a process that I discovered called gene targeting. The strongest soldiers don't become what they are by acquiring their skills through training or experience. We now know that hereditary factors are far more crucial for creating superior soldiers. Snake, we can't give them his body. It's potentially more dangerous than all the nuclear warheads on that island put together. I hear the terrorists are calling themselves the Sons of Big Boss. The sons of Big Boss? Huh? Looks like I got a roommate. The DARPA chief? What a stench. Uh, I, damn, I caught a cold. That witch, she took my clothes. Mera. They've got her. Damn. Snake, the government has decided not to give in to their demands. We're trying to buy some more time. Come on, Colonel. Why don't you stop playing dumb? I'm sorry about Meryl, but I want the lies to end now. What are you talking about? Metal Gear was designed to launch a new type of nuclear warhead, wasn't it? You knew it all along, didn't you? Why did you try to hide it? I'm sorry. Can't tell the grunts, huh? You've changed a lot. Metal Gear, secret advanced nuclear weapons research. 
Does the White House know about this? How deep does it go? As far as I know, as of yesterday, the President had not been briefed about the Rex project. Need to know basis, is that the idea? These are sensitive times. Even subcritical nuclear tests are causing quite a stir. Plausible deniability, huh? Yes. And tomorrow, the President and his Russian counterpart are scheduled to sign the START III Accord. I get it. That's the reason for the deadline. That's right, Snake. And that's why we can't let this terrorist attack go public. We still haven't even ratified START II or dealt with the issue of TMDs. This has to do with the President's reputation and America's place as the dominant superpower. So patriotism is your excuse for circumventing the Constitution? Please, Snake. Just stop them. Why should I? Because you're the only one who can. In that case, tell me the truth about this new type of nuclear warhead. I told you before. I don't know the details. I don't believe you. If the situation is so serious, why don't you give in to their demands? Let them have Big Boss's remains. You see... Or is there some reason that you can't do that? Something you haven't told me about? Publicly, the President has been very vocal in his opposition to eugenics experiments. We don't want the existence of the Genome Army to go public. And that's the only reason? Huh. Hell with you. I'm sorry. The corpse of the DARPA chief is lying right here next to me. Poor oh, man. But it's strange. He looks and smells like he's been dead for days. All his blood's been drained out, too. Drained? Maybe to slow down decomposition? I have no idea. But the Chief only died a few hours ago, right? Right. But he's already started to decompose. What could it all be about? Something in his blood that they wanted? I doubt it. Just the nanomachines in the transmitter. Did the Chief tell them his detonation code? I'm afraid so. It looks like they've got both codes and are nearly ready to launch. Damn. Is there any way to prevent it? It seems that there's some type of emergency override device that can cancel out the detonation code. It's a countermeasure that Armstech installed secretly. You have to unlock it with three special card keys. And where are those keys? I've got one of them. I don't know where the other two are. Besides, I'm locked up here. We've got no choice. Forget about the keys. Your top priority now is to destroy Metal Gear itself. I'm sorry to have to lay it all in your lap. You're all I've got. Bust out of there and get to the communications tower. Also... What? I know it's asking a lot. Meryl, right? Yeah. I'll save her. Thanks. Otacon, are you still okay? Yeah. Thanks to the stealth camouflage, that is. I have a favor to ask. I need your help. I was wondering when you'd ask. What should I do? I've been captured. I'm locked up here in this cell. What cell? There's a big torture machine nearby. Okay. I know it. It's close. I'll be there right away. Thanks. Because you are locked up does not mean there is no chance of escape. Keep your eyes and ears open, and when you see a chance, take it. Snake, are you okay? I feel so scared for you. It must be horrible. Yeah, I, I've been through a lot worse, believe me. Wow, you really are a hero. It's a good thing the codec is connected directly to your inner ear. You can contact us any time. It's always nice to hear that you're alright. Normally, when a soldier is taken prisoner, he should only give up the Big Four. That's name, rank, serial number, and date of birth. But you're not any old soldier, Snake. 
I don't want you to tell them anything. Fortunately, you're strong enough to resist. I fought wars in Afghanistan, Mozambique, Eritrea, and Chad. Among the Mujahideen guerrillas, I was known and feared as Shalashaska. I was trained by the Russian Gru. I am not like one of those KGB slugs. To me, this isn't torture. It's a sport. You're all just a bunch of sadists. Don't confuse me with those uniform fools. Well... Shall we begin? Okay, here we go. Well, that's enough for now, I think. We live in a sad age. Imperialism, totalitarianism, perestroika. 20th century Russia has had its share of problems, but at least they had an ideology. Russia today has nothing. They're struggling between freedom and order, and with that struggle, a new spirit of nationalism has been born. The boss has a close friend high up in the Russian government. He's currently the head of Spetsnaz. He's agreed to purchase this new nuclear weapons system. The Hind was just a down payment. So you're in this for money? I don't need money. I want Russia to be reborn, to lead a brave new world order. new to report. Snake, is there anything I can do? Yeah, my arm hurts. Poor Snake. I'll increase the level of painkillers in your blood. Okay, but you can leave out the Benzedrine. That stuff makes me too frisky. <laughs> I guess you're not feeling too bad after all. Naomi, please talk to me. Say something to take my mind off the pain. What can I say? Anything. I... I'm not a very good talker. Please. Tell me about yourself. Myself? That's a tough one. Any family? <sighs> That's not a happy topic for me. I don't have any family. No. Wait. There was a man who said he was my father. Where is he? Dead. By my own hand. Big Boss. What? Big Boss? I had no idea. There was no way you could. It happened in Zanzibar six years ago. Only Snake and I know the real truth of what happened there. So, is it true? Was Big Boss really your father? That's what he said. That's all I know. And you were able to kill him, knowing that? Yep. How? He wanted it. Besides, some people just need killing. That's patricide. Yep. That's the drama that Mantis was talking about. The one we share in common. Is that why you left Foxhound? 
Let's just say that I needed to be alone for a while, and Alaska was the perfect place. <sighs> Snake. I didn't have a real family either. Just a big brother who put me through school. We weren't even blood related, and he was much older than me. Where is he? He's dead. I'm sorry. Snake, is there a woman in your life? After you've been through as many wars as me, it's hard to trust anyone. Hmm. Friends? Roy Campbell. <laughs> You're still calling me friend? Is that it? No. There was another. Frank Yeager. What? Big Boss's most trusted lieutenant, and the only member of Foxhound ever to receive the code name Fox. Gray Fox. I learned a lot from him. But didn't you try to kill each other? That's true. We did, in Zanzibar. But it was nothing personal. We were just professionals on opposite sides, that's all. And you still call yourself friends? Hard to believe. War is no reason to end a friendship. That's insane. I first met him on the battlefield. He was being held a prisoner of outer heaven, but he didn't look like a prisoner to me. He was always so cool and precise. I was still green, and he showed me the ropes. You knew him well? No. We never talked about our personal lives. Sort of an unwritten rule. The next time I saw him on the battlefield, we were enemies. We were fighting barehanded in a minefield. I know it sounds strange to most people, but we were just two soldiers doing our jobs. It's like a sport. Men in their games. You're like wild animals. You're right. We are animals. So if you were friends, then how do you explain the ninja's behavior? I don't know. <sighs> it's your genes. They make you predisposed towards violence. You really like talking about genes, Naomi. Why did you get into genetic research anyway? I never knew who my parents were, or even what they looked like. I guess I got into genetics because I wanted to figure out why I am the way I am. So you studied about DNA? <laughs> yeah. I thought if I studied my genetic structure, I'd find out who I really was. I thought that by analyzing a person's genetic information, I could retrieve the blank spots in that person's memory. Memory is stored in DNA? We're not sure, but we know that a person's genetic fate is determined just by the sequence of the four bases in their DNA. So what about my fate? You know my DNA sequence, don't you? Your fate? I've... I'm sorry, I have no idea. Of course not. You're a scientist, not a fortune teller. Otacon. I'm headed your way now. Can't you just relax? I am relaxed. I just don't know how to kill time here. Okay. I'll be there as soon as I can. Hey, I'm here. Where? It's me! Otacon. Wow, they even capture you. Hurry, get me out of here. Let, let me go, that hurts. Hurry up! Is that how you ask a guy a favor? Let me go! Jeez, it's like an animal's cage. Oh, what a smell! Because of him. Yeah, it's the Derpa Chief! You don't hurry up and get me out of here. I'll be laying next to him. Those bastards! This lock won't open with a security card. You need a key like the soldiers carry. So what are you doing here, then? I... 
thought you might be hungry. If you need more food, I can bring some more later. Also, I got you this level 6 card. It'll get you out of that torture room. Here, take this too. What's this? It's a handkerchief. I got it from Sniper Wolf. Why? I don't know why, but she's nice to me. Sounds like Stockholm Syndrome to me. I was taking care of the dogs here. After the terrorists took over, they were planning to shoot all the dogs. But Sniper Wolf stopped them. She even let me feed them when I asked. She likes dogs. She must be a good person. Please don't hurt her. Wake up, you idiot. She's the one who shot Meryl. Well, that's all I can do. They're planning to launch a nuke. I've got to stop them. Then you have to get past the communications tower. First, you have to get me out of here. Come on, I'm trying my best. That guard's got the key. You'll have to take him out. Give me a break. I'm no soldier. I can't take anybody out. You have to. I'll be killed. Oh, jeez. He's coming back. See you later. Wait! So, you figured out what I had in mind, huh? I can't believe it actually worked. So, the terrorists intentionally set their deadline to coincide with the signing of the START 3 Accord. According to the terms of START 3, both Russia and the U.S. are to reduce the number of their nuclear warheads in deployment to between 2,000 and 2,500 missiles. The current president has not yet had any major foreign policy successes. His term will be up soon, and the word at the White House is that he desperately wants this one for the history books. Typical politician. It is a big concern for him and his supporters. The signing of the START 3 was dependent on ratification of the START 2. But MIRVs were the most important weapon in Russian arsenal. Naturally, the conservatives in the Russian parliament were greatly opposed to disarming them. The expansion of NATO, along with tension caused by disagreements over the application of the ABM Treaty with regards to TMD systems, made ratification in the 1990s difficult. It took a tremendous amount of pressure and secret negotiations to get the Russians to sign the START 3 tomorrow. 
but the political situation in Russia is tenuous at best, and one small incident could bring the signing to a crashing halt. If the Russians learn that America has secretly developed a new type of nuclear weapon, there is no telling how they might react. World opinion will be strongly against us too. That liquid snake is a smart one. He knows the political climate. His actions were obviously very well calculated. To get to the underground base where Metal Gear is, you'll have to climb the communications tower on the north side of the cave. Planted in your items. Hurry, throw it away! Who the hell are you? One of them? You'll find out soon enough. That was a close one, Snake. Ocelot, you'll pay for that. That Deep Throat's a real enigma. He's definitely from inside their ranks. Is he an informer? Maybe some kind of renegade? I've got the feeling there's some other force at work here. If you go straight down the underground passageway north of the cave, you'll arrive at the communication towers. You should be able to go over the glacier by using the communication towers walkway. Head for the towers!
indeed is true that the signing of START 3 would mean a reduction in nuclear missiles, but it would still leave between 4,000 to 5,000 missiles between the U.S. and Russia alone. That is more than enough to destroy every living thing on this planet several times over. There is a big difference between nuclear reduction and nuclear elimination. Negotiations for START 3 began in the late 1990s. The Russian president had actually been pushing for a much more ambitious arms reduction pact, but it was rejected by the Americans. America was the sole remaining superpower on the Earth, and they were not too eager to give up the title. The fact is, in the history of the world, no dominant power has ever willingly given up the reins of that power. In the case of the U.S., that means nuclear superiority. There has been a lot of effort to reduce the number of strategic nuclear weapons, but even today, there is no treaty limiting tactical nuclear weapons. It may look from the outside that the world is disarming, but in fact, nuclear weapons are not going anywhere soon. The nuclear age is not over yet. As long as one country in the world has nuclear weapons, they will never go away. As long as the strategy of nuclear deterrence continues, nuclear weapons may be reduced, but they will never be eliminated. If you think about it, nuclear reduction does not mean much without elimination as the ultimate goal. I used to work in the DIA. I figured the only way to achieve nuclear elimination was to work from the inside to convince them of the ineffectiveness of the deterrence theory. Seems like you're pretty focused on that issue. Victims of nuclear radiation are a sad thing to see, and I have seen a lot of it. I have seen more than enough of it. I was born and raised in Pripyat, Ukraine. I was 10 years old on that day, April 26, 1986. You don't mean... Yes, Chernobyl. That is the day that changed my life and thousands of other lives. I live just three kilometers north of there. 600,000 to 700,000 people were evacuated. Over 650,000 children suffered the effects of radiation poisoning. Between 1986 and 1993, 12,000 children died. My parents and many others like them who helped in the cleanup died a few years later from radiation sickness. We must rid this world of all nuclear weapons before they cause more misery, before they destroy the delicate environment that keeps us alive. I will not allow this pain and anxiety to pass on to yet another generation.
save your strength. I was a fool. I wanted to be a soldier. But war is ugly. There's nothing glamorous about it. Snake, please save yourself. Go on living and don't give up on people. Don't forget me. Snake, about Merrill. Colonel, I'm sorry. Listen to me. I wasn't able to protect her. Snake, she's a soldier. She knows that prisoners are a part of war. She joined up of her own free will. I'm sure she was prepared for this. No, you're wrong. Merrill thought she had to become a soldier. Thought it was the only way. She said she thought it would bring her closer to her dead father. She said that? She wasn't ready for real combat. I shouldn't have pushed her so hard. It's all my fault. That's not like you, Snake. Master, what is it? Sorry for eavesdropping, but I just couldn't listen anymore. Master. Snake, you can have regrets if you want to. It's only natural. But you can't keep attacking yourself for things that happened in the past. That road leads to madness. Believe me. He's right. Don't kick yourself. It doesn't suit a legend like you. I'm sure Meryl's just fine. Mei Ling. Snake, forget about Meryl. Stop Liquid. That's what Meryl would want too. You're right. Meryl would say the same thing. Snake. What? Meryl. She's pretty special to you, huh? Yes, she's special. There aren't many women like her around. That's not what I meant. She's the Colonel's niece, and a combat buddy. Is that all? Come on. This is like a police interrogation. No, I just... I guess it's in the genes. The genes? What are you talking about, Colonel? <laughs> no, I just remembered about Naomi's grandfather. I think Naomi said he rose as high as assistant secretary in the FBI during Edgar Hoover's time. Is that right? Yes. Yes, uh, he was uh, Japanese, and he became a special undercover investigator to nab the Mafia. When was that? Oh, uh, sometime in the 50s, I guess. Where? Uh, New York, I think. Naomi, I thought you didn't have any family. Well, I, I researched it after I became an adult. My grandfather was already dead by the time I learned about him. I never even had the chance to meet him. Oh. Snake, good luck. Watch your back, Snake. Thank <laughs> you.